Bella was looking at the dark night through a crack in the curtains. Every once in a while, pale white lightning bolt would shine and he seemed to be enjoying it. Good job, Battler. Maria was a bit hazy with drowsy eyes. She was probably half asleep and couldn't think straight. Okay. <laughs> that, oh, that's odd. <laughs> okay. Okay, Battler, stop trying to provoke a child. God damn it, Battler. You're really not helping. Battler, this is your fucking fault. She's three quarters asleep. <laughs> Battler says she's not half asleep. Maybe it was because of her delicate mental state after waking up, but Maria suddenly threw a tantrum. Battler had only been trying to tease her a bit, so he's confused by this extreme overreaction. George held her head trying to calm her down, but Maria's tantrum wasn't going to be quelled easily. Battler and Jessica were trying to push the blame on each other, saying it's your fault, it's your fault too. No, it's, it's entirely your fault, Battler. It is entirely your fault. No. <laughs> It looked like her tantrum was dying down bit by bit, but she still glared at Battler, who made fun of her with sharp eyes. Oh, good lord, calm down! George noticed. Maria was staring at Battler with incredible eyes. And despite having just displayed all that emotion, she laughed in a small voice. <laughs> oh, God damn it. I blame Battler for this. Instead of a laugh, it seemed more like she was muttering while thinking about, or else counting each he. As though each time she said he, something brutal would happen over and over. George felt something creepy for just an instant. But he couldn't spot the madness that peeked out of the depths of the girl's eyes just for for just a moment. After a short period of stunned silence on George's part, Maria stopped her quiet, bizarre quiet laugh and pushed George's arm aside as though telling him to let go. Good, because it was just like, it wasn't that bad of a deal. Or so, it wasn't that big of a deal. So, so, <laughs> Maria chan wa erai na. You're forgiven for the absolute harmless act of what you did. あ、悪いな、からかって。許してくれ。ほら、マリア、中直りの印にカフェオレ作ってやったぜ。砂糖いっぱい入ってるから甘いぜ。いらない。でも許すよ。魔女だからね。One more time, Maria laughed in a creepy, quiet voice. It was only for a very short time, so Battler and Jessica didn't think much of it. They didn't think much of it, hello? They decided to think that it had probably only lo looked that way when the lightning lit her cheek with a pale white light for an instant. That would look even creepier!
It's already creepy enough. At that time, they could hear the sound of uh, loud footsteps coming from the hall. It was already about 10.30 late at night. Late at night is usually a time when you aren't supposed to be disturbed. Hearing footsteps like that at this time was far from calming. 10.30 late at night, Jesus Christ, shut the hell up. Late at night. Then along with the clearly ominous knock that repeated it fiercely, they could hear Goda and Kumasawa's voices. That clearly told them that this was an abnormal situation. No. Go away. Unless you're bringing soup, I don't care. When George opened the do door, the two of them tumbled in, so, uh, sopping wet. It looked like they had dashed here from the mansion without an umbrella. Well, that's just foolish. No, it's fine. It's just, you know, a massacre. Oh my god. The way that ended. <laughs> Uh, but this earlier than they usually have it, so this is interesting, because usually they have it after midnight when this stuff happens. It's usually not this early. I wonder why. It was a pitch black room. There were no windows with the weak light bulb, one could just barely make out the state of things around them. It appeared to be an old forgotten underground storage room with some kind of dusty furniture haphazardly thrown into it. Why the fuck am I in jail? However, even with just a little light, one could at least make out that it probably wasn't a storage room. <laughs> no, usually bars on a window indicate not a storage room. After all, the room was sealed off with iron bars. What the fuck did I take last night? <laughs> They dropped into what appeared to be a pit, falling into this room. Therefore, it was natural to assume that this room was directly under the dining hall. We can use logic to dictate that we probably didn't actually fall through the floor, Kraus, but... Sure. <laughs> I just think I took some, uh, I tripped hard. And that's how I got here. <laughs> well, the Jokers will come out and just say, Ah, oh, it's nothing but a prank afterwards. But, uh, I don't know where this is. But it almost looks like, a, uh, where the gold is. Or like on, on that underground passageway thingy thingy. Like, uh, the staircase. It looks like that. It's like the same kind of design. So it might be there. However, not even Krauss could bring himself to believe that there were pitfalls, pitfalls rigged in his beloved dining hall where he had enjoyed his meals for years. Yeah, I think that's uh, safe to assume that that's not what's the ca that's not what happened. And then this dungeon-like room lay directly beneath it. But the ceiling above was a crude stone craftsmanship, and they couldn't understand how they could have fallen from somewhere up there. No, all five people who had been dra dropped here thought the same thing. Although they'd been had the sensation of falling into a pit, there was no way there could be pitfalls pitfalls in the dining hall, nor could this dungeon like place be directly under it. This five people. Uh there's Canon Shannon, Kraus, Kyrie, and Who's left? Nanjo? Oh, Nanjo. That's who. Okay, <laughs> just need to make sure I got the numbers right. But the truth was that I actually had fallen into this place and were locked in. So they were confused. Hell no. Why would I know about a room like this? Yeah, 
本当です本当にこの部屋知りません Despite their age, Kyrie apparently wouldn't have found it odd if they, as servants allowed to wear the one winged eagle, might know of the mansion's secret tricks. But they wouldn't fall into it now, would they? There was a long silence as if Kraus was elevated, evaluating their answer. Again, they wouldn't fall for it if they knew about it. What? That wouldn't be my answer. Don't tell that to Natsui because apparently、uh, Shannon doesn't do enough. Fuck first aid, we need the police first. Nandra's words were hollow. Obviously, six people had been killed in the dining hall. Everybody had seen the exact moment when they'd been killed. And since half of their heads had been destroyed, anyone could tell that the deaths had been instant with just a glance. Everyone understood that first aid no longer held any meaning. It's a little bit hollow, though, so. <laughs> Once again, a gloomy silence dominated the atmosphere. But Kraus shook his head harshly over and over for the time being, and decided to forget the pain of losing his wife and dedicated himself to figuring out where they were. <laughs> yes, Lord Kraus. I will follow you to the gates of hell. What is your orders? <laughs> What? Nobody answered. Without any kind of discussion or mercy, six people had been killed in an instant. And Kento had been so bold as to proclaim that we had become sacrifices for a ceremony involving 13 murders. Since we've been locked up in this place, we too will be, probably become the ceremony's next sacrifices soon. Around this time, our eyes became used to the darkness, and bit by bit, we were able to understand more about the dungeon's interior. What we thought was furniture haphazardly left in the dungeon turned out not to be furniture at all. There were people. There were things like small cages to lock people in, restraints or else torture racks. At any rate, it was obvious it was eerier than a mere jail cell. Since the objects were rusted together and coated in thick dust, there was no doubt that they had been forgotten. Maybe you could even call these things Kenzo sealed and forgotten madness. However, we had been locked away in this room. These objects weren't exactly comforting to people who were locked up, hoping to be released without harm. Oh, wow, thanks, Kraus. I didn't think of that. Thank God I have you to tell me that we should get out of here. <sighs> It theoretically should be because he said that the 13 would just die and it would be this group. That would be ideal. They did not look calm at all. <laughs> Shannon and Kraus smiled bitterly a little. But they quickly realized how improper that was and stopped clearing their throats. 
楽観はできないよ姉さん僕らに続いてもう襲われてしまってる可能性だってある同感ねお父様が食堂で執行したのは魔女の碑文の第一の番の6人殺しなんでしょなら第二の番は寄り添いし2人を引き裂け There's no one else that's really close. I mean, that's not in these recruits because I, then I thought, like, oh, Shannon gets away, then it would be Jordan and Shannon. But the only people left now are the kids. Kumasawa and Goda. Are they going to say Kumasawa and Goda are close? They're not. They haven't been shown to be close at all. Doesn't really make much sense. I wouldn't consider them close. To guest house, me go you state, Kodomota Cho Mamote Creter and Terakan. Genji tend to a mataku de Kinai. Kirei Konli and Alla analyzed the worst case scenario. For her, it was heartbreaking to have lost her beloved husband, but right now, the most important thing was protecting that husband's son, along with the other children, from becoming the insane family head sacrifices. She overcame her sadness with the parental urge to protect children from sorrow. It seemed that both Kyrie and Kraus were strong enough to forget about their grief, if only for the time being. They would let their tears flow later. In order to protect the children, they had to act. <laughs> Curie pulled a lighter from her pocket. We are going to melt each individual bar. We're going to do this. <laughs> She herself didn't smoke, but she kept one tucked away in her pocket to light, for, light Rudolph's can cigarettes. It was an extremely valuable source of light for searching in this dim dungeon. Yeah, they're just gonna leave the key inside. What the fuck do you... <laughs> or they'll leave a crowbar here to break open the door. Like, what the hell's wrong with you? Come on, people. これだけ古い牢屋だ。ひょっとすると、ガタが来ているかもしれない。私は何をお手伝いしましょうかな。体力を温存していてください。やがてここに親父殿が現れるだろう。親父殿に言葉が届くのは南朝先生だけです。ある意味南朝先生に我々の命は握られているかもしれない。なら、南女先生のお医者としての知識を貸してください。人間を即座に混沌させるような毒って存在するのかしら。人間を即座に混沌させる毒。どういうことですか。うん。私たちは落とし穴に落とされて、この力に落ちてきたと信じている。あの混乱している場で、私たちはそうだったろうと信じたわ。So is she gonna agree that they just got really fucked up? でも、この力の広さを測ってみてわかった。この力があの食堂の地下というのはありえないことなの。Okay, she's probably gonna say because uh. It doesn't something uh, about like you know the design of like you know the stone above. But, I mean, I think it's just obvious and logical to assume this isn't underneath the dining hall. Dostey, 
Thanks, Cannon. この力は食堂に比べて狭すぎる。その通り。一番目に落とされたのはクラウスニーさん。二番目が私。クラウスニーさんはこの部屋に落ちてきたとき、その場を動いたかしら。お恥ずかしながら。落下しながら落下の痛みで埋めいていたよ。そのすぐ傍らにキリエさんがすぐ落ちてきた。食堂でのクラウスニーさんと私の立ち位置と落下時の落下場所の距離が明らかにおかしいのよ。と確かに言われ
I don't know if that's quote quote unquote reasonable to just assume that you fell through a floor or well, fell through a hole, but I got no other ex explanations other than you got knocked the hell out. Though I don't know that doesn't really serve a purpose though, because once you get out you can check the time. Because what is it, what goal does it help them to say what time's different? I don't, and make you assume that you fell down a hole. I don't know why that would make you think differently. There's a fuck ton of drugs. Yes. There's plenty of drugs that can render you unconscious. Whether it be, you know, drugs or gases. Like, if you pumped in a gas into that room, they might have, like, hallucinated before, you know, going unconscious. Which is why it would make that magical scene, quote, the quote, magical scene up here. In that sense, that they were just hallucinating right before they passed out. この力を Oh well, since you mentioned that, let's talk for another three hours. <laughs> so I think it's odd that these uh, rampant girls uh, started shooting golden uh, golden arrows at us. I think that's a little strange, and we should probably investigate that. That's because she's fucking intelligent. And I don't think he is. Silver lining, buddy. Goddammit. I was really hoping she'd, she'd have been said like, Oh, you know, you, you usually swagger about a lot. But once the going gets tough, you completely crumble like an egg. I, I would have died laughing at that. My god. That would have been perfect. <laughs> yes, they're designed to keep you in. Shit, it's iron. Cross and Cannon tried wiggling the bars in various ways. Time to melt these beams. What's the melting point for iron bars? Good lord. Might be here for a few hours. There were a few bars that could be twisted. And a few had enough space to rattle a bit by a little bit around in. But they couldn't be broken with human strength alone. If you really want to do it, actually, the ones that wiggle, that, you can actually heat that up a little bit. And probably get it to move a little bit more. However, there was still hope that they could use some kind of lever-like tool. It was still far too early to give up yet. The children's lines were hang hanging in the balance. Maybe wrap some clothing around 
the uh, bars start lighting on the clothes on fire to heat up the bars and start kicking the bar like once it gets hotter and see if you can't you know bend it a little bit more it was better for them to act this way because all you need is just to get it just a tiny bit warm just so you can bend it just a little bit. You don't need to actually melt it, because melting it, you're not going to get it that hot. If you can get it a few hundred degrees, you can probably move it a little bit. At least more than when it's cold. If they were to stop, there's no doubt they'd once again be overcome by grief of losing their loved ones and curl up clutching their knees. I would have said something if I found something. Bigger the stones if you could use them as a weapon. Oh shit, there's actually like shit behind here. Oh yeah, you could totally take that bust right there and break it over the bar, see if that does anything. Take the phone, do something with that, take the chair, start beating the shit out of stuff with it, come on. The picture frames, though, those are metal, you could use something to pry it with that. Come on, there's there's loads of stuff over here that you can just hit the shit out of stuff with. Thank God. Hiri, what are we... We're not going into battle here. Let me guess, she can fucking pick locks now. Oh. Kratz and Kiri laughed together at the at how they hadn't even thought of using the phone as a means of communication. Yeah, the phone in the dungeon's gonna work. Come on. Whisper. God damn it, what'd he say? At that point, Shannon let out a small surprise cry. Hmm, that's suspicious. That, that's really suspicious. Why would. What did he whisper? What's the need to whisper in a situation like this? If it's connected, you just say out, Hey, it's connected. Why whisper? Then how would he know if it's connected? It's not like he went over there or something like that. 